Welcome to support videos for Control Loom workload automation video series. Today we will be going through the process of changing the client certificate used by Manage File Transfer and Advanced File Transfer 8.2. This will allow File Transfer to send a customized client side certificate when required for FTP over SSL connections. To change out the certificate used for File Transfer, you first need to gather the correct pieces of information. We will need a signed certificate with its private key and the CA chain used to certify the certificate. This information is typically supplied by your information security team. Unless your new certificate was provided in the PKCS12 format, we will need to create a temporary key store with this information and merge it into your existing file transfer key store so that we may preserve any previously imported certificate authorities. Now let's walk through the steps in a demo. In the temporary directory I've created, I've copied over the existing key store used by file transfer and the new certificate data, which is the key, the signed certificate, and the CA. So what we're going to do here is take a look at the existing key store. So we're just going to use OpenSSL for this. The default password used by the application is just password. And this is used for both the key store password and for any private keys. And what you see is there's actually two identities in here. There is a demo CA um, that's used for the transfer server, which is the FTS here. And if we scroll up, you'll see that there's one actually used by the AFT and this is the one we're going to replace, which currently uses the name AFT. Um, this is often referred to as its identity. As we cannot directly import another identity in the key store, we're actually going to create a temporary key store, and then we're going to merge the two in the last step. Using this command here, what we're going to do is we're going to export into a new key store the certificate, the key, and we've also specified the certificate in the creation. And this is the, going to be the new identity, IAFT. If you have additional certificate files, you can actually do additional minus cert file directives on the end of the line and add those. This is the key, this is the passphrase used to open the key. For the sake of making this easier down the road, we're going to continue to use the password as the same password the password to password and this was created and you see that this is our new video solution CA and video solution certificate and there's its new private key so the next step is to actually merge the two key stores and this is a pretty long command so I'm going to cut and paste this and what this command does is it calls the Java Utility Key Store, and we're going to use the Import Key Store Directive. And here we're just setting the passwords and the key store type, which is PKCS12, as well as setting the source password and the source key store and the alias which we want to import. Okay, once this is completed, we now have a combined key store that has both the old data and the new data. So let's take a look at that real quick. And what we see is we're being prompted here additional times because we have additional keys to open. And you can see that this one right here is the original AFT. And here is the one that we've added, which is the new certificate, which we're going to use moving forward. So our next step is to actually copy this key store and put it into place. So we're going to go to where the key store is stored. And we're going to back up the existing key store.
And we're going to verify the same permissions. Everything looks good. So the next step is now to update the configuration so it will use the new identity. In the data directory, we have a file here, which is called FTP SSL underscore config dot properties. This contains the identity information. And right here is where we specify the identity. So let's just go ahead and take a copy of this line. Let's uncomment it. And let's change this to our new identity. The last step now is to restart the file transfer daemon so these changes take effect. And for this, we're just going to use the CF CTM AFT container command. On this particular instance, we also have a hub, so you'll see additional shutdown information. We will now restart the container using the CTM AFT container start command. This concludes the demo. This concludes our Control Room Solutions video. Please see our knowledge base and YouTube channel for more videos like this.